Hi, this is JC with Beyond 20. And today we're going to take a look at SLAs within ServiceNow. Um, and primarily we're going to take a look at basically how to set them up. So once we're in ServiceNow, uh, and this is just a demo database, so we're just going to basically look at a, a demo SLA just to see how they work. So if I type in SLA here, and then under service level management, I can go to my SLA definitions. And I'm just going to choose one here, uh, kind of at random here, which is priority to resolution eight hour. So if you're going to create yours or if you're going to edit it, you have a number of fields that you can edit. And so it's going to walk through that really quick here. So the name, this is just the name of your SLA. Our type, this is an SLA. You can also set it as an OLA or an underpinning contract. The target is going to be a response or resolution. So in this case, when the ticket is uh, resolved, that's what we're really going for. The table that we're doing this to is incident. And you can set it on various tables, as you can see here. Now, this one does have a flow attached to it. So it's got this SLA notification and escalation flow. You can open the record if you'd like to go into it and see what exactly it's doing. Otherwise, uh, and, and this we're not going to here. Um, you can enable logging on it and then make sure if you're wanting to actually use it that you set active as true. Our application is global. Uh, for this one, the duration we're actually going to define here. There are some canned out of the box durations that you could use instead, uh, but the duration for this is eight hours. Schedule source or SLA definition and the schedule that we're using. We can define our own schedules, but in this case, it's just uh, eight to five during weekdays. So in that case, the weekends won't be going against the SLA. And the time zone is going to be the caller's time zone. So this is a pretty standard SLA. Like I said, this is just one out of the box, so it's going to be pretty standard. Um, our start condition. So when would we start this SLA? Uh, in this, we're going to set it to start when it's created. It also has to meet these conditions. So active is true. Uh, it means it's going to be an active incident. And the priority is a level two high. Um, and then when we cancel, when the conditions are not met. So it would cancel, for instance, if the priority level got changed to like a three or four or five or even a one, it would cancel that and it would start with that SLA. It does have a retroactive start and a retroactive uh, pause time as well. Uh, so when will it pause? By default, it's going to be if it's uh, the incident state is on hold and it's a waiting caller. Um, generally, uh, in, in things that I've seen, this is generally really the only time that you would want to pause it, other than when it gets set to resolved. Because this is a resolution, uh, generally, a lot of time companies use when it's set to resolve, you'll have a time period of maybe three to five business days when if the customer doesn't respond or the technicians don't reopen, then the ticket will automatically be set to closed. So the end date for the technicians, assuming everything is correct, is going to be when it's resolved. So it gets paused during that time frame. So you're not going against your SLA when you believe it's resolved. In addition, when it's on hold and you're awaiting the customer, uh, the reason that we're stopping here is because the, the customer isn't waiting on you, the technician, but if there are um, other hold uh, reasons, so if it's waiting a problem or waiting a vendor, from the caller's perspective, it's still on the technicians to resolve it. So it's still on you to resolve it. And so that's why your SLA continues to go. And that's why a lot of companies use this only for the awaiting caller. And then our stop is going to be when the incident actually hits that close status. Uh, you do have the ability to add a reset condition in here. Um, I haven't seen it used a lot, but you may have uh, a need for it. So one thing I want to show you here as well 
we're just going to go ahead and open up an incident here. I'll go to one that has this priority of a level two. And we'll give it a minute to open. So we can see this is in progress. It's got a priority level of two. If I scroll to the bottom, I don't see my SLAs. Well, that's not going in. So in this case, we're actually not seeing any task SLAs associated with this. So in this, we do have this related link of repair SLAs. So we are going to click that. Close it. Scroll back down. And here we do see that it has that priority to resolution. So that same one that we saw, uh, we can see that it's definitely elapsed a lot further than it should. Um, we can go into that SLA. Um, we can see what's going on with this ticket. Um, because this is an out-of-the-box instance and I haven't touched these tickets, that's why it's so far out of date. Uh, but that's all I've got for SLAs uh, for today, and that's just a general overview of ServiceNow's SLAs. Thanks, and have a great day.